Hi, and you're now with the Forerunner Chronicles. All right, everybody, so what I'm getting ready to share with you is absolutely jaw-dropping shocking. And it's not going to be shocking to the majority of you out there because you've never heard me deal with this issue before. Neither is it going to be shocking for many of you out there because you didn't already know that the Bible nor the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy, according to Revelations 12 and verse 17 and Revelations chapter 19 and verse 10, deal with these issues as well in detail. That's not the reason why it's going to be shocking for the majority of you out there. It's not because you've never heard about what I'm getting ready to share with you. The reason why it's going to be shocking for the majority of you out there is because what you're getting ready to see is something that you never believed that you would see in your very own day. Oh, you thought it was going to happen years from now. You thought it was going to materialize after you were dead and gone, and maybe your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren would come into existence. But no, my friends, it's happening right now before your very eyes. Because what I'm getting ready to share with you is video footage from a recent presentation that Kenneth Copeland presented at one of his churches with thousands of evangelical members present, at which point he, not the Pope, he, not Tony Palmer, but he, Kenneth Copeland, one of the most prominent evangelical quote-unquote Protestant leaders, declares that the protest of Protestantism is over. And he speaks not for himself only, but he speaks for a collection of the most prominent evangelical leaders in the world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to take my words for it, but you will have to identify this as a fact as you watch and listen to some of the video footage that was just recently shot at Kenneth Copeland's church. Take a look. <laughs> the joint declaration on the doctrine of justification or being born again and the righteousness of God is a document created and agreed to by the Catholic Church's Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity and the Lutheran World Federation in 1999. As a result of extensive ecumenical dialogue, it states that the churches now share a common understanding of our justification by God's grace through faith in Christ. To the parties involved, this essentially resolves the conflict over the nature of justification which was at the root of the Protestant Reformation. The protest is over. This was brought about by spirit-filled Pope and spirit-filled Lutherans that got together in the Holy Ghost. Now, listen to this statement. In faith, we together hold the conviction that justification is the work of the triune God. The Father sent His Son into the world to save sinners. The foundation and presupposition of justification is the incarnation, death, and resurrection of Christ Justification thus means that Christ himself is our righteousness in which we share through the Holy Spirit in accord with the will of the Father. Together, 
the Catholics and the Lutherans, where the fuss started. And all, all the rest of our um, Protestant denominations sprouted out of that over the years. Together we confess, now listen to this, by grace alone, in faith in Christ's saving work, and not because of any merit on our part, we are accepted by God and receive the Holy Spirit who renews our hearts while equipping and calling us to good works. Amen. Amen. I, folks, I'm telling you, this, this is powerful, powerful stuff. You recognize James and Betty Robinson there next to Tony, and then Jeff Tunacliffe. Now, Jeff is Secretary General CEO of World Evangelical Alliance. That is... Uh, one of the largest evangelical associations, if not the largest, in the world. And then uh, down on this other end is John and Carol Arnett, uh, partners in Harvest in Toronto, Canada. You remember the Toronto blessing? It broke out, those are the pastors, it broke out in their church. And so they were there. And then Brian Stiller, Global Ambassador, World Evangelical Alliance, is the man right, right next to me there uh, on the left. And then the tall guy in the back is Dr. Thomas Schumacher, uh, Martin Bucher Theological Seminary in Bonn, Germany. Now, take a good look at that picture. The night before, we had a dinner together before we met with, the, with Pope Francis the next day. That many evangelicals in one room. <laughs> uh, folks, you don't get it. But do you get it? Ladies and gentlemen, do you get what you've just seen and heard? Do you realize that you have just heard Kenneth Copeland parroting the words of Bishop Tony Palmer that he presented just a few weeks ago at that convention center filled with evangelical leaders, at which point he was the first one to declare that the protest of Protestantism is over. Do you remember that? If you don't remember that, let me help jog your memory. This brought an end to the protest of Luther. Brothers and sisters, Luther's protest is over. Is yours. In 1999, this was signed by the Lutheran Church, the Federation Worldwide. Later, about five years later, the Worldwide Methodists signed the same agreement. But as of today, we still have had no Protestant evangelical that will stand up and sign this agreement to agree with our brothers and sisters that we are saved by grace through faith to good works. And I believe that's something that needs to be fixed. There's a challenge for you. So the protest has been over for 15 years. And I get a bit cheeky here because I challenge my Protestant pastor friends. If there is no more protest, how can there be a Protestant church? Maybe we now we're all Catholics again. Now do you remember? Do you realize that what you're looking at right now, what is transpiring in your very day of existence is the beginning of the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 16 and verse 13 where the Bible tells us, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast, which is the prophetic symbol of the papacy led out by the Pope, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, which is the prophetic symbol of the apostate Protestant movement, a part of which that delegation that went to go meet the Pope, all are key players. 
The word of God goes on to say in Revelation 16 and verse 14, for these are the spirits of devils working miracles, which are gone forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Do you realize that this apparently benign and passive movement that is going forth with rapidity at this time is going to develop into a situation in which the majority of the inhabitants of planet earth will find themselves uniting with the devil and his host of demons in fighting against God in the battle of Armageddon. Do you realize that? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't realize that, it's because you're dead asleep in your sin. And it always baffles me how that when an event of this magnitude is taking place, there are always those who instead of using their time and their strength, their voices and their finance to actually help and alert others to what's going on so that they can be prepared for the crisis. On the contrary, they're lifting up their voices and saying, oh, well, we already knew this was going to happen. The Bible already foretold it. So, you know, prophecy is going to be fulfilled. So let's just continue to live our lives and, you know, just believe in Jesus. That's foolishness. Because the Bible testifies that those who are aware of the nearness of the second coming of Jesus Christ should be actively involved in a special work. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. According to the word of God, there are those that should have a clear understanding of the fact that the day of the Lord is at hand. And although they may not know the specific day, neither the specific hour, at which point the Lord will come upon men as a thief in the night, it's clear that they do have a foreknowledge that the day of the Lord is a literal event that all humanity must be prepared for. And with this foreknowledge of the eventuality, the rapid approaching of the day of the Lord, God has enjoined upon men and women a very special work to be engaged in right now. The Bible tells us in the book of Joel chapter 2 beginning at verse 1, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, and let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us that as we see the day of the Lord approaching, we're not supposed to be saying, oh, you know, Bible prophecy is being fulfilled, so praise the Lord, hallelujah, let's just wait for Jesus to come. The Bible doesn't say anything like that. The Word of God tells us that as we see the day approaching, we need to be blowing the trumpet and alarming the masses of our world to what is getting ready to take place so that all the inhabitants of the land, both believers and non-believers, will tremble at the reality that the end of all things as we currently know it is at hand. Non-believers need to tremble because they've been scoffing and mocking at Jesus Christ and they need to turn away from the works of wickedness and find a place of refuge in Jesus Christ. And believers, so-called followers of the true and living God, you need to tremble as well. Because if you're truly a follower of Jesus Christ, if you're really one that's following the Lamb whithersoever he goeth, then why are you standing there idly? Why aren't you trembling at the fact that multitudes are getting ready to lose their lives? How can you still be so selfish as to hoard your time and your strength and your resources that can be used for the salvation of others? Let me let you know something. You need to tremble if you're still an idle, indolent, do-nothing professed Christian because destruction is coming. The Bible tells us in the book of Joel chapter 1 and verse 15, alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand and as destruction from the Almighty shall it come. And as this destruction is approaching, the Bible warned us in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 3, for when they shall say peace and safety, when they shall say the protest of Protestantism is over, let's just all kiss and get along. When they shall say, don't worry about the prophecies. Just look at Jesus and occupy till he comes. When they shall say peace and safety. When they try to calm your fears and cause you not to tremble at the approach of the day of the Lord. Sudden destruction will come upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. 
there is no escaping what is getting ready to come. So I'm warning you. It's time to surrender your heart to Jesus Christ. I'm warning you. It's time to stop professing being Christians and to start living your life as Christians because the day of the Lord is at hand. What's your decision going to be? Choose wisely. As always, this is the forerunner. And whether you like it or not, the truth is the truth. <laughs>